You're listening to the Tepes Paranormal Talking Point Podcast, a show that discusses various aspects of the paranormal world, with paranormal news, ghost stories, interviews, and much more. And without further ado, let's get into some talking points. Hi guys, Scott here from Tepes Paranormal and welcome to the Tepes Paranormal Talking Point Podcast. So the plan for today is I'm going to talk about haunted dolls. Now if you're familiar with me or the Tepes Paranormal YouTube channel, you'll know that there's a bit of a history between myself and haunted dolls in the sense that I own one, which we'll get onto later on in this episode. But to start off with, I want to talk about a few famous examples of haunted dolls. To start off with, I want to talk about Annabelle. You've probably heard of Annabelle, the doll which served as the inspiration for the character of the same name in the Conjuring movie universe. Unlike the fictional version of the doll, the real-life Annabelle is a fabric Raggedy Ann doll, not a porcelain doll as shown in the movies. The doll is kept within a wooden and glass case at the occult museum of famed paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren, who claim that the doll was given to a student nurse in the 1970s. The doll was said to move on its own, with the student nurse keeping its legs uncrossed when leaving, only to find them crossed again upon her return. Soon after these events, a psychic medium told the nurse that the doll was inhabited by the spirit of a girl named Annabelle, who was said to be around six or seven years old. After this, a tale tells of one of the nurses that lives in the apartment's boyfriend's Lou. Now Lou slept on the couch in the apartment, and one night he awoke after a nightmare. It's reported that this nightmare consisted of a dream that the doll was crawling up his leg, and when it got to his neck, it started trying to strangle him to death. After this nightmare, Lou angrily grabbed Annabelle and threw her across the room, at which point he's said to have been demonically attacked, with Tony Spearer, the son-in-law of the Warrens and the current owner of Annabelle, claiming that Lou had seven psychic wounds appear on his body, four slash marks on his chest, and three on his stomach. It's said that the wounds were similar to claw marks, and this was the first indication that the spirit attached to the doll was not that of a six-year-old girl. At this point, Ed and Lorraine Warren were contacted to intervene. They then had an exorcism performed in the apartment by a priest, and the Warrens declared the doll as demonically possessed, taking it into their own collection, where it became first locked in the museum. So Annabelle obviously is very well known for the Conjuring movie universe, and a lot of the stories you hear about the real life Annabelle are derived recently from that. However, that movie obviously is heavily fictionalised for the sake of the story and horror. As with a lot of Ed and Lorraine Warren cases, a lot of it in recent years has been overly dramatised due to the movies that have been made about them. With the real life Annabelle doll, there have been a number of experiences reported. I don't know necessarily how believable they are, There was a news headline recently in which Annabelle supposedly escaped from the museum that was holding her, but this was later revealed to be false by the Warren's son-in-law, Tony Spearer, who did a live stream showing the doll still in its case. So overall, I'm unsure about Annabelle. I don't really know if I buy into the possession and the demonic claims that the Warrens have made. I'm quite sceptical about Ed and Lorraine Warren. A lot of their claims are only backed up by their own stories, There's very little evidence to go with what they claim. But yeah, it's interesting to say the least. And with the doll gaining popularity thanks to the movies, you'd like to think there'd be more investigations around it, which may eventually lead to some evidence being captured about Annabelle. Next up, we have Robert the Doll. Robert is a supposedly haunted doll that's currently held at Fort East Martello Museum and Gardens in Florida. This doll was owned by Robert Eugene Otto, an artist from a prominent family in the area that was described as eccentric. The doll said to have been created by the German Steiff Company and bought by Otto's grandfather in 1904 while on a trip in Germany. If this is accurate, this would make the doll over 100 years old. The doll is seen wearing a sailor's suit, which is thought to have been an outfit that Otto wore as a child, and is described in the following way. His nub of a nose looks like a pair of pinholes. He is covered in brown nicks, like scars. His eyes are beady and black. He wears a malevolent smirk. Clasped in his lap, he's holding his own toy, a dog with garish, popping eyes and a too big tongue lolling crazily out of its mouth. The doll remained in the Otto family home for many years, and in 1994, 
after the deaths of Otto and his wife, was donated to the museum where it became a tourist attraction. It's said that this doll has supernatural abilities, allowing it to move, change its facial expression, and it's also been reported that footsteps and giggling can be heard when nearby the doll. It's also said that the doll has caused car accidents, broken bones, job loss, divorce, and other misfortunes, and that visitors to the museum often experience post-visit misfortunes. Much like Annabelle, Robert is used as inspiration for a horror franchise, with the 2015 film Robert and its four sequels all being based around the doll. Thirdly, we have Mandy, and for this doll, we're leaving the United States and going north to Canada, where we can find Mandy the Haunted Doll. Mandy's a porcelain doll that can be found in the Quesnel Museum in British Columbia, with a face that features a sinister half-smile and eyes that seem to follow you around the room. Mandy's considered by many to be Canada's answer to Annabelle. Donated to the museum in around 1991, Mandy's former owner is said to have constantly heard the sound of a crying baby around her home, and after following the noise into the basement, the owner found Mandy in a storage space. It was at this point that she donated the doll to the museum, with the crying stopping once the doll had left the premises. Mandy is said to creep out staff and visitors at the museum, with footsteps being heard around the location, and staff's lunches being moved and in some cases going missing entirely. Mandy's locked in her own special glass container to keep her far away from the other dolls, and it's been said that on some occasions, the little stuffed lamb that sits on Mandy's lap has been found outside of the locked display case. It's also reported that technology often fails around the doll, with people who try to photograph and video the doll having malfunctions or freshly charged batteries dying on them, though some have suggested that asking Mandy if you can take her picture will prevent this from happening. This is a common report in the paranormal world, that of technology malfunctioning, specifically with batteries draining. The most common theory for this is that spirits drain the energy from batteries in an attempt to charge themselves, in the sort of way that the energy that they drain can be used to help them manifest, or to help them show themselves, to give them the strength or the physical power to move things. And while this is an interesting theory, it's not one that I know enough about in terms of the science, but I have myself witnessed devices losing battery for no logical reason. With Mandy, I feel that like there are some interesting claims here. There's nothing concrete, and there's nothing that, unlike Annabelle, is too outlandish. So a lot of the claims with Annabelle obviously are quite like I said before, Hollywood, they're very entertainment, whereas Mandy and Robert both have much more subtle claims. You know, the occasional noise, the odd thing moving or things not quite being where you left them, which in my opinion seems much more believable than Annabelle. So next up we have the Island of the Dolls. Now the Island of the Dolls is a case that I covered during the Tepe's Christmas Advent Calendar at the end of last year. So if you want to know the full story behind this, go check out that video on YouTube. However, I will cover it here and give a recap. In Mexico, there's an island that's filled with various style of dolls. These were placed there by the owner of the island, Don Julian Santana Barrera, who believed that the dolls kept the spirit of a girl who drowned by the island at bay. It's reported that Don Julian heard the girl's spirit crying out, I want my doll, which is what led him to fill the island with dolls in the first place. And that while living on the island, Don Julian would recall hearing screams erupting from the forest while trying to sleep at night. Some local legends have also claimed that the dolls move on their own, and can sometimes be heard whispering to each other. I find the island of the dolls interesting because dolls are innately creepy on their own, and when you put them on an island that is sort of open to the elements, especially since the passing of Don Julian himself, uh, where the dolls have become much less cared for. I think it just gives it a naturally creepy sort of feeling. I know that when several paranormal investigation programs have visited the island in the past, they've captured voices, some of the dolls moving, that type of thing. But I think the problem is because there's such a wide collection of dolls, some of them could be powered or could be mechanical. I just think there's a lot of potential for uh, explainable evidence there. But of course, that doesn't take away from the creepy nature of the island and from Don Julian's stories. The island is one of the places that I would love to visit, as I think it's just fascinating the history of it and the way in which the Island of the Dolls stemmed from Don Julian's experience of finding a dead girl floating by the island. Out of the four cases that I've just gone over, I think there's definite potential for a few. I think that obviously Annabelle being the most well-known doll is definitely 
something that takes away from any potential experiences purely due to the fact that like i say it's a lot more heavily covered than some of the others i think that mandy and robert are both interesting dolls as well with haunted dolls there seem to be a lot of similar uh, reports of whispering of the dolls moving and of feeling negative or negative things happening after you've seen the doll as well as with a few of them the technological malfunctions that happen i don't necessarily know entirely how believable the dolls are the fact that the three i've just mentioned are featured in museums mostly in paranormal related aspects is another thing that i think sort of both gives credibility and detracts credibility from the dolls because they're in these places where they would be constantly monitored you'd be more likely to see something but at the same time lots of people tour around and visit the dolls and these people all report different experiences and phenomena that happen with the dolls so yeah i'm not sure okay so next up we're going to go over something that is in the world of haunted dolls is not particularly big but it's something that is relevant to where i live so in plymouth there is a haunted doll known as the haunted mickey doll that can be found in a shop on plymouth's barbican the mickey doll which is entirely made of foam with a metal inner frame was purchased by the owner of something different an antiques and collectibles store in 2012 and was left resting against a cabinet in the store overnight as it couldn't stand by itself however one day when the owner michael returned to the store he found that the doll was in the middle of the room now the cctv footage of this incident And the doll in the footage does seem to move by itself from the cabinet forward about eight inches and then falling to the floor below. The owner has since moved to a different shop across the road from the previous one. But I went to visit a few years ago and spoke to him, uh, seeing the doll for myself firsthand. And I can confirm it is just foam. There's no mechanical parts. Uh, There's no, you know, there's nothing that would make it move on its own. And the owner claims that he doesn't believe the spirit is evil, um, and that he doesn't, and that he's never really had paranormal experiences in the store other than this, and that the only ones they find are with the doll. Now, occasionally they have had things that have smashed during the night with no logical explanation, and they've heard, you know, voices and footsteps in the store, but nothing concrete. The only thing that they've captured on camera, to my knowledge, is this doll. And looking at the footage, I think it's definitely an odd one. Uh, In the video, it does certainly look like it moves on its own, completely, you know, unaided by anything else. But I can't be sure. So yeah, I think it's one to look at in the future. And with it being local to me, I might attempt to go and have another look, potentially getting a bit of an investigation underway if possible. And with that, that brings us on to our final haunted doll I want to discuss, and that's Stacy the Haunted Doll. So Stacy is a haunted doll that's particularly close to my heart because I own Stacy. You can see more of Stacy on the Tepper's YouTube channel where there are several videos investigating the doll, but I'll tell you a bit about her and a bit about some of the things that I've experienced with the doll. So Stacy's a porcelain doll that I bought late in 2020 from eBay. The listing on the website describes Stacy as a seven-year-old girl that fell from a bridge in Devon. This is what initially drew me to this doll specifically, as I myself live in Devon and thought that was an interesting connection. The listing also claims that she shows herself clearly as an apparition, something that I've not experienced in my time with the doll. However, interestingly, the listing also mentions that small, faint giggles can be heard when you're in the doll's presence, and this is something that I believe I've experienced earlier this year. At around 1am while I was sitting at my computer, I heard what can only be described as a light feminine giggle from behind me. At the time, it took me by surprise and was completely unexpected. I didn't really know how to react, so I grabbed my camera and filmed a video. It was only a brief video to capture my reaction and thoughts at the time, but it can be found on the Tepper's Paranormal Twitter. I have done several investigations with the doll using both Echovox and Necrophonic Spirit Box apps to try and communicate with the doll. There were a couple of things in those videos that I caught that sounded like responses to questions I was asking, but nothing concrete and nothing intelligent that seemed consistent enough to say it was a communication from the doll. I've recently acquired a proper spirit box, so I will at some point use that on Stacy 
and try and get some sort of conversation going on. And with that, that brings us to the end of talking about the haunted dolls. So I find the idea of dolls being able to be possessed by spirits, dolls being able to be haunted, you know, the attachment, etc. quite interesting. It always seems to be children that are attached to dolls, other than the case of Annabelle, which is said to potentially be that of a demon. Now, one of the interesting things about demons, which I'll talk more about in a separate uh, podcast at some point, is that they often are said to pretend to be children to lure people in and to try and trick people into interacting with them more. But yeah, the idea of haunted objects is something that fascinates me and something that I want to look into further. I want to acquire some more objects. Uh, There are a lot of haunted museums around the world. Zach Bagans from Ghost Adventures has a haunted museum, as do the Warrens, as I've previously mentioned in this episode. And these are all places that I'd love to visit. There are also a couple of haunted museums in the UK that if I can get to at some point in the future, I will. And yeah, I'd love to know your thoughts. So please feel free to contact on Twitter, um, comment on the YouTube videos, and let me know your thoughts on haunted dolls, on objects being haunted. Because it's not just limited to dolls, and I will do another episode where I talk about other haunted objects as well. Specifically, I also want to go over the Warrens Museum in another podcast, which I will do at some point. But for now, that will be the end of us talking about the haunted dolls, and we'll get on to the news review. As you know, I do a lot of paranormal investigation, and when I do, I like to be comfortable which is why I wear clothing from allegedlypossiblymaybe.co.uk. With a wide range of high-quality clothing available for low prices, I strongly recommend checking out their website and buying some clothes. If you enjoy quality clothing, visit allegedlypossiblymaybe.co.uk and use discount code TEPIS at checkout to save 10% on your order. Now it's time for the Tepes Paranormal Talking Point Podcast News Review. So I've only got three headlines that I want to talk about today, all three of which come from the mirror.co.uk and are paranormal based. The first headline is, Ghost lurks over grave in bone-chilling images from most haunted cemetery. Now this headline reads that, that Tyler Karanasios, 26, captured the haunting photos at the Pine Hill Cemetery in Hollis in the US state of New Hampshire, which is dubbed one of the most haunted. Now the bone-chilling images shown in this article supposedly show a ghostly figure standing over a grave. The curious 26-year-old decided to visit the site which is also known as Blood Cemetery after Abel Blood, who is rumoured to have been a murderer with occult connections. His ghost is said to haunt his final resting place, and Tyler now fears he may have disturbed a spirit. Looking for something spooky, Tyler decided to visit the cemetery, and he soon discovered the reason for the site's haunted reputation. He said, My friend and I wanted to find somewhere haunted to visit. When we arrived, it was probably close to midnight. Some spots were cold, and some were warm. It was strange. I believe a lot of it was adrenaline, but it is possible I was feeling the presence of a spirit. He noticed a figure at one point, but it moved quickly and scared him. He then told his friend they should take some flash photos before they leave. When they got home, they realised that they'd captured something. An ethereal mist is visible between two rows of headstones in one of the images, and Abel Blood's headstone happens to be in the photo. Tyler then went back during the daytime to take another photo in the same space, just to indicate what was being shown in the picture. Now, in the picture, to the left-hand side, there appears to be what I can only describe as a sort of mist, but in a humanoid sort of shape. I'm not entirely sure what I'm looking at in this picture. It could just be some sort of matrixing where the eye is trying to detect something within a picture where there's nothing, but there is a definite sort of shape there. And yeah, I don't know what it is, but it's certainly interesting. And it does look... It stands out in the picture a lot more than you would expect it to if it was, say, nothing particular. But I'm not sure. It looks like it could be fake. I'm not saying it is. It's what you expect to see when someone says a misty sort of ghost. It almost looks like someone in robes or a hood. And yeah, I'm not sure. I'd love to get your thoughts. So obviously, if you want to take a look, please feel free to look up the article and let me know what you think. Next up we have, Man takes photo after hearing noise in kitchen. An image is giving people nightmares. People have been left disturbed after they zoomed in on a photo a man shared on Reddit, saying he took it after hearing taps and noises from the kitchen while home alone. So, I've skimmed the article, and basically the headline gives it all away. Uh, After hearing taps and noises from his kitchen, he took a photo, and in the photo, you can sort of make out a human head shape, possibly with a bit of shoulder as well. Um... 
yeah, I don't really know what it is here. Other than sort of being a little bit creepy, there is what appears to be a shape. You can almost make out two dark pits where the eyes would be. Given that it's in the dark, obviously you can't see any of the details, but yeah, I don't really know. Again, I feel like it could be very easily faked, or it could just be something behind the door. Without knowing the location where, you couldn't really tell. According to one of the commenters, somebody said that the resolution in the image is different, uh, only in the area where the face is. You can see that the pixels are rendered in just that area differently. Um, I don't really know. It looks it looks creepy, but again, I think it would be very easy to fake, and I'm not overly sure what I think about it. And finally, we've got the headline of Woman Gets a Thrill After Spotting Ghost Looking Right at Her in Eerie Video. A paranormal investigator has shared the moment she claims to have captured an apparition on camera in an area of woodland in the US thought to be haunted. So, in this article, during a trip to Mount Misery Road in Long Island, New York, a woman claims to have spotted something rather spooky. Paranormal investigator Lynn Ludwig, who posts on social media as Linfamous, uh, visited the area rumoured to be haunted to explore the woods. She took a video and in the video believes she captured an apparition, a ghostly figure, looking right into the camera before looking away. Now, it's only shown briefly in the video, on this website at least, and I don't really know, it's sort of a grey, much like the previous, it's sort of a grey outline, almost mist-like. It really could be anything. The Mirror website does a really good job of not letting you actually see the video because they hide it behind their little banner at the bottom telling you the headline. It certainly looks like a shape of a sort of humanoid figure, but it really could be anything. I don't really know what I think of it. It looks weirdly heighted if it is a person or if it is a, you know, spirit of a person. But again, go take a look. Let me know your thoughts down below. I think it could just be something in the background that's being picked up and that the woman filming wants you to believe is a figure i don't know though it's you know it's all up for interpretation i'd love to get your thoughts and with that that brings us to the end of the tapas paranormal news review and to the end of the tapas paranormal talking point podcast make sure to follow us on social media and on youtube as tapas paranormal and i look forward to seeing you in the next podcast